The first Republican debate of the 2024 primary season is less than a week away. And whether Donald Trump is on that stage or not, his presence will kind of hang over everything. That's because Trump's Republican opponents are not only competing against him, they're also up against a cult of personality that's now firmly rooted and dominating their party. There's even recent speculation that he may turn himself in on Wednesday in order to overshadow the debate. Let's pause on how crazy that is. That may sound insane, but take a look at this. With each indictment, Trump is actually widening his lead over the other GOP primary contenders. So whether those candidates like it or not, or whether it's hard to kind of wrap our heads around or not, the path to the nomination goes through Donald Trump. His poll numbers need to come down for theirs to go up. And that may be why, despite the growing mountain of criminal liability Trump is now facing, very few of his opponents have shown a willingness to take him on so far. They're making a calculation it may not be smart for them politically. Of more than a dozen candidates seeking the Republican nomination, only four have publicly criticized the former president in earnest. And among them, Chris Christie has so far been the most vocal by a lot. He wants to have his cake and eat it, too. If, in fact, the charges had happened three years ago, he would have said there was no investigation. It's a rush to judgment. If they happened after a full investigation, he says, well, now it was time to work with the campaign. Look, running for president is his choice. No one else is making him do it. But it is not an excuse not for the justice system to continue to operate. Christie's message is basically Trump wants to have his cake and eat it, too. You can't have that in our justice system. And it seems like that message could be working for him. I mean, a new poll out of New Hampshire shows Christie second only to Trump in beating Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, although there may be other factors, including Ron DeSantis' weak campaign. So who knows? But Christie's campaign and his strategy might be working a little bit. The problem is that this, the strategy isn't a clear political winner in the Republican primary. If the 2016 debates are any indication, you're sort of damned if you do and damned if you don't. You certainly can't ignore Trump, but taking him on directly seemed, at least in 2016, only to harden support for him. Back then, it was almost painful to watch as the candidates, one by one, tried their hand at attacking Trump, and nothing really seemed to stick. Now, the difference now, after serving as president for four years, is that Trump has an actual record they can criticize, and he may soon also have a criminal record, too. And let's be honest, a number of these candidates need to shake things up anyway if they're still going to be in the race a few months from now. Joining me now is Jennifer Palmieri. She's the former White House communications director for President Obama. She's currently the co-host of The Circus on Showtime. So there's so much to dive into here. But I mean, I want to start with just this thing that is so crazy, which is this notion that Trump, there's a lot. You're like, what are you going to say here? That Trump could turn himself in on Wednesday, the day of the debate. And Republican strategist seems to be debating whether that is a better strategy or doing it the next day to overshadow debate coverage. So first of all, just your reaction and thoughts right. on that. Well, like, the thing is, is what, what my big takeaway is that either I... I, I under any of these scenarios, he turns himself in on Wednesday and he goes to the debate or he doesn't go to the debate. He turns himself in on Thursday yeah. to stem coverage of the debate, which is pretty smart, actually, I have to yeah. say. Um, the point is he's in control. Yeah. Right. Like he's that dominating is, it all. He's dominating. Yeah, he is dominating it all. And so no matter what, you know, everyone is in the situation of having to react to him. And then I think of these campaigns trying to prepare for a debate where they don't know whether or not he's going to show up and like how do you you know how do you do that cuz it's 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 so hard i mean i've prepared we've both prepared for these multi candidate yes. debates and it's such a you have to have so a many target, bank shots. an objective yeah. There was a um, leak, as we like to say, you and I have been a part of these in the past as well, of, Ron, of, a, of a memo to Ron DeSantis from his super PAC. Now, the basic gist of this memo yeah. is that he should defend Trump and take out Vivek Ramaswamy. Now, I mean, if anybody would have told this campaign that his objective was to take out Vivek Ramaswamy in the first debate a couple flag. of months ago. Flag <laughs> that things aren't going well. That's a big Because flag. you know what? They need, they do need to do that. He yeah. is like, he's a big threat to him. Vivek is a big threat to him and to DeSantis in, in Iowa. So do you think that's the most important person for him to target and well, take they, out? Well, I mean, this is like, first of all, we have to like, I do, we love, I love the camp, the memo. So it was the memo from the super PAC yes. that can't communicate with, uh, Ron DeSantis in real life. And so what they're doing, they're doing two things. One, they're trying to tell Ron DeSantis, 
Vivek Ramaswamy is a threat to you. If you may not appreciate yeah. that as much as we do, you need to take him out in the debate. Also, they're trying to set the stage for all of us to expect that that's what's going now, to happen. Tactic, so it's not so jarring yeah. when it does, because it is going to seem jarring when all of a sudden everyone's going to start going at when Ron DeSantis, who is supposed to be the big anti-Trump guy, starts going after the guy that no, most of America still has not heard. No, has any idea. Now, yeah. the tactic of it, whether or not I agree or you agree with the strategy, is actually pretty smart because yeah. I think because DeSantis could also go into this debate and be kind of a scoop of vanilla ice cream, not right. that exciting. But people will have been talking about and covering right. his tactic, right? Um, That's true. That's true. This Right, because he's probably not going to, he probably won't dominate and do well under any circumstances. So lay out a strategy that will, that so people understand what you're trying to accomplish, and then the coverage will largely be about your political strategy, not the fact that, you know, you didn't, like, win over the crowd. Yeah, exactly. It's actually... It is actually smart. And I have when I see focus groups of Republican voters in Iowa, the names that come back up are Vivek Wamaswamy, if I'm saying that right. That's so hard for me. Um, or um, Tim Scott. Tim, yeah. Now, the other piece of the strategy in there seems to be that he should defend Donald Trump, including against attacks from Chris Christie. What do you think of that? Right. So, um, I mean... Ron DeSantis made a decision a while ago that he was not going to defeat Trump by attacking him for not being electable. He was going to defeat Trump by being the very conservative alternative to him. And it was interesting, like early on, we saw after he finally announced for president in June, I guess, right? It feels like a long time ago, but I think it was only June, that he was going to, he was running to Trump's right. He wasn't saying, I am the acceptable electable alternative. He was saying, like, I am more anti-woke than Trump, even. And so he's decided, they've made that decision, they're not going to go after, uh, that they're not going to go after Trump, that he will either fall of his own weight or not. So defending him, I guess, in this, like, really it's perverse... Like it's not working so well so far, but... It's not working so well. It's so awful. I mean, all of it, and, I, you know, feels, it feels like fantasy football. A, a bit, a bit. Right? It does like, feel like it's on Earth, too, I mean, or another universe. They, yes. If you are going to take Trump out, I think the way you do that is you have to win in Iowa, right? That's like all the smart Republicans who are trying to stop Trump, and they are smart people that are trying to stop him. That seems to be what they've all agreed upon, right? Mm -hmm. Like Republicans against Trump, the Sarah Longwell group, which I think does really smart work, really smart ads. They've put all their money in Iowa, and they're, like, running a bunch of ads there. DeSantis is clearly make, trying to make a move in Iowa. So is Tim Scott. So is uh, Vivek Ramaswamy. So I still have real doubts, even if you do win Iowa. The last time a Republican won Iowa and went on to win the no Republican nomination was in 2000. Mm, it's quite some time ago. Okay, so there's a whole other swath of people we haven't even talked about who are going to be there's on like the There's like eight people on this There's stage. a lot of them. So if you're Nikki Haley or Tim Scott, what do you... What do you even, what is success what you, for you? What do you try to do? I think, so this, I've been thinking about that because, like, how are you preparing when you don't know if Trump's going to be on the stage or, or if he's going to turn himself and in that day or what else is going to be happening? What else is going to be happening? And you also, you really don't even know if Chris Christie is going to be there for sure because Chris Christie has not agreed to the RNC pledge mm -hmm. that you must support whoever the nominee is. And it's unclear if that's going to prevent him from the debate stage or not. So you don't even really know if he's going to be there. And he's a big factor. Mm -hmm. So I imagine what everyone is diverting to, which is kind of a cop-out strategy, which is like, we just want to introduce ourselves to primary voters, mm -hmm. right? They're going to say, Nikki Haley is going to think, I'm going to put forward the best argument I can to give the best presentation of myself and not trying to go after. Um, I mean, I think that's what, like, I think that's probably what Nikki Haley would do, what Tim Scott would do. Uh, Christy could just take a, you know, he could just try to mow down everybody. Um, and then it's interesting with Vivek Ramaswamy, does somebody go, like, who is the person that starts to go after DeSantis? And is it is it him because he knows that that's his only, that's what's standing in his way? Um, Does he pull an Elizabeth Warren on Mike Bloomberg? Just a, <laughs> one of the best debate moments in recent history. 
We don't know yet. Murder, like murder, murder, city. murder, murder, suicide. <laughs> exactly. Vegas. Yeah. Um, Jennifer Palmieri, I love talking about Earth Two with you. It's so fun. <laughs> it's um, so fun. Thank you. Well, we have more Earth Two to discuss in the future. Thank you for joining really. me today. Happy to. Uh,